We've talked a bit about ESA's biomass experiment before on this channel. This Earth-observing satellite was launched April 29th on a Vega C rocket and is currently in its commissioning phase. That's where the team checks that everything's working on the satellite, tests the science instruments, and fine-tunes the details ready for the main science mission. At the Living Planet Symposium on June the 23rd, ESA released the first jaw-dropping images from this testing phase, and we'll get to those in a second. The mission is the first P-band synthetic aperture radar to study the Earth from space, and its job is to measure the amount of woody biomass in the world's forests. Measuring this biomass, which is the total mass of trees minus the mass of the water in the trees, will give us an equivalent measurement for how much carbon is stored in the world's forests, and over the five-year mission, whether this amount of carbon is increasing, decreasing, or remaining the same. This is crucial as we try to understand how effective forests are in helping combat the effects of climate change. The problem with trying to study biomass from space is that when you look at a forest from above, you just see this. What we're interested in is not all these leaves, but the woody biomass below. P-band radar has a wavelength of around 70 centimeters and was selected because it can penetrate the upper canopy layer of forests and actually measure the woody tree trunks and branches all the way down to the ground. For example, here's a biomass satellite image of a Bolivian rainforest. The green in the image is rainforest, the reds are floodplains, and the blue-purple is grassland, and the snaking black thing running through the image is the Beni River. Bolivia has suffered significant deforestation to make way for agricultural use. In addition to penetrating the forest canopy all the way to the ground, the other huge advantage the biomass mission brings is its ability to combine images from different satellite passes to gather information on forest height. By combining data from these passes, scientists can get a very accurate estimate of forest biomass from orbit. Here's another biomass image of northern Brazil showing wetlands below the dense forest canopy in pink and red. As you can see in this third image over Indonesia, biomass's ability to penetrate all the way to the ground means it's also useful for generating topographic maps of forested areas. It's going to be super interesting to see the data we get from biomass when it gets into its stride and starts science operations. That's today's video. Have an awesome weekend. I will see you back here on Monday.